Hello, this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside again. Right, this is a traditional grandfather clock, probably dated round about, I'd say, 1780s, sort of circa around that sort of time. Um, it's got a painted dial uh, with a dial plate on it, which was made in Birmingham, I think. The dial plate and the dial are actually out the way of the workshops because it's actually been restored, the dial, and I don't really want it around the workshops because I don't, um, I, I really don't want anything to happen to it and then have to get it repainted again. So it's out the way safe. Now, obviously the difference in this type of clock and the 30 hour clock is obviously the strike, pay, uh, strike train is totally independent of the time train from the point of view of it has a separate weight to drive it. Now, if we go down, we can see our two weights, okay? And we have our pendulum. Now, this clock was repaired probably well over a week ago now, but we had the problems we had with it, we, we were having uh, problems with the striking side of the clock. Um, um, a, a lot of it has been down to on this particular clock is and it, it's not finished yet by any means it's really just on test and we're, we're sort of seeing what happens but it's 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 had the usual service where it's all being cleaned and again this one we would have probably you know obviously cleaned by hand um, and it's attached to a seat board with two seat hooks um, and main the main problems were were in this area here, uh, which is your rack. So you've got your rack and snail. Now it's called a snail. Just hold this phone a little bit without putting my hands in the way. Is because this part here is shaped like a snail shell, and the lever, which we're pointing to here, actually whatever position it lands there, it's that's what's going to adjust where this rack is in order for it to say give the amount of strikes needed so for instance if it landed here it's going to be sort of 12 o'clock if it landed here it's going to be 10 o'clock eight o'clock seven o'clock six o'clock five o'clock four o'clock three o'clock two o'clock it can do it, it you know that that's the general plan there but then obviously this lever here if that is not in the right position, now there was absolutely loads of work done on that lever by whoever had this clock whenever before. Uh, it's certainly not right at the moment. We're going to improve them, the, the washer situation. But, you know, all this was out of shape and, you know, they, they've pulled it forward. Now, you've got to understand you, you, you're working on an angle there. So if you pull it forward slightly or move this pin slightly, you cannot, even though it might land at the say six o'clock position on your snail, you, you, you're gonna find it, it could it could strike seven. It only has to be very minute, it could strike seven, it could, could strike another, another another number. Now what we find generally is when we set these clocks up, we try to mark everything up. We we, we will mark sort of your two back wheels, often they've, had, they've got marks on them, make sure they do correspond to where they're supposed to be. Um. That's one thing, but we will often mark them up and we'll also mark the snail up as well. We'll position the snail and put a mark on. Now, um, marking up, marking things up. I mean, get yourself a marker and, 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 and try to do it that way, to be honest with you. I mean, we, we see scrapes and scratches and, 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 and many things. I mean, and you know, I think you want your, your work to be as neat as possible. I mean, and if you're a marker, you know, you can you can get that off. No problem once you're set up. Um on the front and that you know you want to you want to think of your future clock makers you know we look at things hopefully there will be many of them i mean although you know i'm getting bad news every other week to be fair um but yeah i mean i'd like there to be more i mean hopefully some of these videos i'm making will sort of simplify things with my way of explaining uh, you know i try to keep it simple i don't want to blind people with science it's not it's not it's not an art or, you know, we're not no clockmakers are not black wizards. You know, we we we're just simply engineers, and that's what we are. You know, and um, we just got to try and keep it a bit as simple as we can. I will get disagreed with, by the way. If I, I, you know, uh, it's not simple, and it's this, and it's that, and it's the other. But you know, as I say, 
in many of my things. I, I was taught by a lot by my uncle and his attitude is get on with it. Simple as that. Get on with it. You know what you're doing. Get on with it. You know, do it right. I mean, he, 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 he's 100% certain I will do it right. So his attitude is get on with it. You know, that's it. But won't be tired if you do it wrong. Let me put it that way. Um, yeah, but anyway, that that's that type of movement. So that they, there's the difference in that, and it works by levers. I mean, if you got this lever here, if you lift lift this lever, it'll sort of let. If you lift this lever, it'll let the rack fall, and then it'll strike wherever the position of this is landed. It'll strike in that position. Now, obviously, you've got a few places to set a grandfather clock up. Um, Obviously, this is very important, is your rack. You set that up to where it's going to be on there. Now, what we tend to do is when we're, when we're, when we're working on striking problems, we will go right round and check and it strikes right. Because what we found in the past is, and it's obvious because you've got a curve in, in your rack here, you know, so it's not, it's not a straight line. So it's a curve. So, you know, there is slight differences as it goes along. So... What we found is if we, we go round the clock and, and make sure it strikes, because sometimes we went round and we've got to sort of five o'clock and then six o'clock struck seven and then, you know, and, and then it's went on from there going wrong, you know, and, and then probably you get to 12 and because it's it's too far advanced, I mean, it, it's going to jam the rack up, you know, that type of thing. But yeah, but that's, that's the pretty thing. I mean, it, on this, I mean, there's been solder and work done there. And it, and it and it's not a you know it's not very good. It hasn't been finished. There's nothing wrong in brazing and, and and solder and stuff. It's just you know finish it off, you know finish it a, a little bit, make it look nice. I mean you know hopefully when you know these clocks come to you, you're only going to be doing them once and and, and they're going to be going back and you pro probably shouldn't see them again. I mean you know you may you may get people you know we do have people coming to us and you get them serviced every five years anyway. Such as you know we've got a Joseph Finney that comes in. Uh, it's it's only be, we, it was sold by us. And then five years later, the guy turns up with the movement once it's served. It's nothing wrong with it at all. And he wants it to dial re silver. And so we, we, we done that. But, you know, not often. People, people don't want to be spending out, you know, it's a, you know, it's not cheap, you know, servicing, uh, grandfather clock movements, not cheap at all. And, uh, I'm not being funny, but why should it be? I mean, you know, you, you're trusted with these clocks and you, you know, you want, you want to do a good job of it. And it's certainly not a rush job. And, you know, you can't, um, you know, we can't do it like a conveyor belt situation whereby, you know, you're knocking them out and, and one thing and another. I mean, you, you know, you, you've got to pay, you've got to pay attention to what you're doing and clean them properly. And, you know, and, that, and that's it. And I don't make any excuse whatsoever for the, for any cost of charge. If people don't want it doing, no, that's no problem. You know, go elsewhere and find someone if you can. I don't think you will like, but, you know, there you go. That's the way it is. I, I, and I, I don't have that attitude in a nasty way. I, I just say, OK, then fine. No problem, I'll leave that with you. But uh yeah, but that that's a grandfather clock. So yeah, on this you're looking at two 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 trains in a way. Obviously, the side here is your time side, side here is your strike side. Now you obviously when you wind them up, now what we do is when we wind them up, we wind them up and saw that the, the, the two wheels are pretty level with each other when, when, when they come up. And then what we will do over the over the period of time of where the clock is on test, what we will do then is we will um, check that they're going down at the same speed, if you like. So, so you know, we don't get any. If, if we get a, a massive difference, I mean, you can see they're not exact, but you know, it's probably okay. But if they're going down, where you know, at a, at a complete difference, you can bet your life there's a problem with the clock. If they've gone down at different speeds, it's it's you know there's going to be a problem. I mean, I mean after the first few days and stuff, if you look, you'll see there'll be an issue. Um, so that that's one thing we check. We keep close eye on that. Uh, we always make sure after we've rectified any problems, we wind it up and we wind it up so it's level. In the meantime of that, we're going to regulate it with that nut on the bottom of the. Uh, pendulum just in case anybody doesn't know please forgive me if i'm telling people how to suck eggs it's just that i've got to uh, understand that not all of us have, have, have had experience of this type of clock so i'm trying to keep it as simple as possible and have a bit of a, a wide range and interest for everybody really but yeah that's pretty much the same you're going to find you know 
the, the, they're pretty much they're all pretty similar i mean there's you know they all work pretty similar there's there's no um there's, there's no major differences there's no major differences once you've done probably you know half a dozen of these i mean you, you, you're going to be pretty much much on it i mean my my idea is though when you're working on any clock is take plenty of photographs of it and get yourself a little notebook make notes make notes of what you see things odd washes and stuff like that so that you know that direct you then to problems it when a problem occurs that directs you to it then if, if you know it's in that air ah well that's why you had that washer on or that's why you done this or that's why that spring was different or that it, it directs you into that area and you know then you can start improving things then and that's what we do we, we get the work done on them mostly uh we make a good assessment to make sure that we can actually do them and then what we'll do then is we'll um just work on it and improve it over them couple of weeks while it's on test regulating it and getting it right uh, and then it goes back to the customer and you know being honest with you we we don't get many many recalls. I mean, you know, we, we do get the odd one. Obviously, everybody does. I mean, the amount of clocks we we actually uh, repair, but you know, we do get the odd one. And 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 sort of you know, quite a few times it's customer error. They, they you know they've 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 done something. They you know they took the weights off and they can't get them back on or something like that. You know, because it's it's not like a chain where you just hang them on this. I mean, you've got to loop your your, your pulley wheels through the gut line. And then that's how that works. Anyway, this is video number two. Uh, and this is an eight-day grandfather clock. Video number three, I'm going to turn this clock movement round. And I'm going to show you the back of the clock. And I'm going to give you some, inf some information on how to put the uh, clock in beat. Um, them chime bars, by the way, are nothing to do with this clock. They're just a set of chime bars we use on the more modern grandfather clocks that come in for repair. We have a few around. and Just, just to, you know, listen to the chimes, really. Um, although... Obviously, once you set them up, I mean, they usually are in sequence anyway, so there's no real problem there. Uh, grandfather clocks of this type are more often than not just striking clocks. You do get musical clocks, which sometimes they're on bells. Uh, they're obviously three train, um, quite ornate, lovely clocks, nice to work on. Again, when you take any clock to pieces, you know, take a couple of snaps, take a couple of photographs of it, make notes. Don't, don't, uh, don't ever underestimate the power of that. Uh, I mean, it, it's pulled us out of a few things over the years. No problem. We've had a few photographs. But anyway, this is John from Clock Repairs, Merseyside. As I say, hope these videos are helpful for you. Um, please leave any comments you like, providing that they're friendly. And also, please subscribe and like. It really helps me. Thank you.